What's up, YouTube? ODST General back again with another Operation Trebuchet news update. Um, it's been a little bit since I've done one of these, and there is a lot of news to cover. So instead of covering everything, because I've had some issues with this video and uh, audio not recording, I'm going to record it a little bit differently this time. And I'm only going to record the uplink from the devs for right now, and then come back and get all the extra stuff from the uh, the developers that's not official in the uplink um all the stuff from the community all the other things and then i want to upload that a little bit later of a date here so uh, let's go ahead and get started because there is a ton of stuff that i need to cover in this uplink alone um so the biggest uh, piece of information from this uplink which was posted by big wilk is a new map that they're testing out um so it's the New Horizons map demo, and there's a bunch of screenshots and stuff like that. Uh, instead of giving you guys the screenshots, I think I want to just go with some uh, kind of cinematic -y type uh, footage for the background. We'll see what happens, though. So let's get started here. New Horizons is a large 21 by 21 kilometer map with two islands located on an as-of-yet named planet in the Halo universe. The smallest island is 5 kilometers by 0.6 kilometers in size and based on topographical data from the Rathlon Island in the UK. Their larger island is 9 kilometers by 9 kilometers in area and was created in L3DT. Uh, you guys should also note, uh, ahead of time, there's some grammatical errors and stuff like that, so if I say something that doesn't seem to make much sense, it was probably written like that. I will try to correct it if I catch it as I'm reading it, but uh, no guarantees. Uh, anyways, let's continue. The map's name comes from the smaller southernmost island and is called uh, New Horizons after the Horizons Mining Company, HMC. And this abbreviation gets screwed up for the rest of it. That owns the mineral rights to the area around the island. The island's mineral resources have largely been depleted in recent years, meaning HMC has had to close or mothballed most of their operations on the island. The island's current civilian population is thought to be around 130 civilians, most of whom work or used to work for an and this is where the uh, the abbreviation gets screwed up. MHC or HMCC. It's NHC. What they have. It just totally screws me up. Anyways, or are the families of former uh, Horizon Mining Company employees? I'm just gonna read the whole thing out. I'm not gonna do the abbreviation. The main industry on the Isle of New Horizons today is a small scale livestock farming uh, community. And I lost total track of where I was, guys. This is just that abbreviation threw me off way too much. Oh, that was bad. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so they tend to take care of the company's mothballed sites, and there's a lot of farmers there. Um, they have collectively acquired most of the land on New Horizons from the company, electing to create an old-fashioned commons farming system similar to those found on some areas of Earth where animals from various owners are left to graze freely across the entire island, with animals being rounded up by the entire community at various times of the year to be vaccinated, sheared, or sold to market. The colonial military... I don't know why I can't talk. I just don't give myself enough time is what it comes down to, I think. The Colonial Military Authority has recently converted some of the unused and mothballed HMC uh, industrial sites into supply terminals for their forces on the mainland due to increased insurrectionist activity. Several supply depots on the mainland have been raided by insurrectionists in recent months. New Horizons is seen as an ideal storage area and base of operation for CMA and UNSC use due to its isolated nature. Much of the abandoned infrastructure on New Horizon complements the nature of the CMA operations on the island thanks to two large mining sea levels built by HMC for their autonomous mining barges to dock at. The CMA and UNSC now use these sea levels to ferry supplies between New Horizons and mainland. Uh, so, and then there's a little abbreviation here, uh, just basically saying, or not abbreviation, but a little aside, basically saying what a level is. A level is waste material from quarrying is used to create a flat area on coastal quarries for ships to dock at. This is called a level. And then it wraps up by saying, in addition to large fortifications by the CMA has constructed on the impressive land... What? In addition to large fortifications, the CMA... 
should be a comma there, has constructed three impressive landing platforms that overhang the sea on the west coast. Each is capable of housing four aircraft. So this uh, landing pads that they talked about there, those are actually something we've shown off in uh, one or two of our past news uh, updates that I kind of talked about, stuff that was shown on the Discord or the Reddit, um, you know, where those pillars were with, like, the little triangles and stuff. Uh, and you guys should see that at some point during these shots if you haven't seen it already. Why the demo? I would like you to test out the smaller island and give feedback. While the smaller island is still in development, I'd like to draw a line under the work on the small island soon. Please locate areas where objects have been misplaced slash look odd as well. You may also suggest ways to improve areas of the small island. I'd also like a suggestion for a planet name. New Horizons is based on the description of Sanzar in the Halo Glasslands and Halo, Halo the Mortal Dictata books. Somebody shoot me, please. <laughs> Anyways. I may call the planet Sanzar, though I would like to explore different options at this stage. And four, finally, is bug testing of the map. Um, and just a little bit of an aside, if you guys have not read Glasslands, Moral Dictata, or Thursday War, read those books. I'm not a huge fan of the new lore, the 343 lore. Uh, I do, however, really enjoy those books. They are excellent books that follows uh, a really kind of a cool mishmash team of, like, undercover guys working for Oni. Anyways... Let's go on, because now they talk about the larger island here. And uh, as you guys will have seen the, lar uh, the screenshots here, the larger island's in a far less complete state, but we'll talk about that here some. As for the large island, I'm not ready to show you many of the buildings and have hidden them in this test version. But needless to say, it is a work in progress and I don't want feedback at this stage. But I do have plans that involve the community helping build this city and need your help at some point. The island will have a large city at its center with a spaceport, airport, sea docks, and will be broken up by four large forested parks. There will be an opportunity for you to create areas of the city yourself in Eden Editor, which will be then exported to the main project. Stand by for more information on how to contribute to this city in the future, but feel free to start thinking of ideas. For those interested, this is my basic plan for the city area. And then there's like a little thing for the uh, imager, which has an image of that. Um, I have some custom buildings in the works for certain areas of the city. We will also need a name for the larger island and the city. Throw your suggestions in the comments. Current known issues. Light levels will be changed at some point to allow lighter green map textures to stand out better in midday light. As you guys can see, that is a bit of an issue uh, in the footage I have here. I am aware of one bug where cars stop around the middle of the island when using the main road. So I don't know if he's just like testing with like civilian traffic or if he's just talking about like if you try to command an AI in like a warthog on that small island or what's going on or if he's talking about the highway in the big island. Uh, unfortunately, that I don't know right offhand. Uh, the other big thing in here is the air asset improvement test. Lumna and myself, along with other community members in Discord, have discussed some of the missing features from Optray Air Assets, as well as technical bugs that detract from gameplay. Once you have downloaded and installed the mod, you will be able to check out my attempts to solve some of these problems. Simply search for Test in Eden, and you will see a test version for each aircraft for Blue 4. I have tweaked the aircraft's detectable signatures in the following way. This will determine how effective AI are at detecting each aircraft, as well as how effective their ability to shoot down the aircraft is. The changes I've made are largely in line with how BIS set up their aircraft. Here's a list of my tweaks to aircraft signatures, with one being the basic value. So I'm not going to read off the exact values of all these, but uh, I'll kind of narrow it down for you guys. Um, the Hornet is roughly about half its signature. The Pelican's signature has been increased about twice the amount of the base level. Uh, the Falcon's about half that level for both its radar and IR, and the Longsword is four times the signal, which means it's going to be much easier to hit from a distance, uh, so that, you know, this big massive deadly ball of death can actually be kind of countered some, because it tends to go out of draw distance because of its speed pretty fast, so it makes it a very difficult vehicle to hit if you're not ready for it, and you don't know it's going to be coming. Um... Finally, to the uplink here. So, oh, there's one thing, actually. Uh, there's one non-uplink thing I want to include in this. Uh, in regards to the air vehicles, um, Wilk and the community have tested out a new maglock system for the Pelican. Uh, this is a, a code that you put into the Pelican when you uh, put it in, in the editor. 
And this will allow you, if you're creating a mission or something, to actually be able to load and unload vehicles onto the Pelican. This is using the new load vehicle function from uh, uh, Tanoa and all that stuff from the Apex expansion. It's a pretty cool feature, um, so I hope you guys are enjoying the footage because that should be on screen too right now. Uh, there is still some bugs with it, so just be aware of that when you're using this. Uh, odd things might happen. Otherwise, go nuts with it. Anyways, let's get back into the dev activity. Zephyr Souza has been showing off her latest Optray model, a custom non-lore IFV that has been named the Bison in a community poll. This vehicle will hopefully fill a much needed role in Arma 3, affording our troops a safer ride, along with some images that kind of talk about this. We've discussed the Bison in past updates, so we're going to skip the images. Uh, Zephyr Souza has been working on her own version of UNSC's slash Halo's famous most famous tank, the Scorpion. Rabbit355, a developer from the Arma 3 War Chronicles mod, is helping us with the configuration of the model. I'm kind of hesitating because I'm totally reading that wrong and like making up, like paraphrasing words as I'm reading the actual words. Sorry, guys. Once again, we've seen the Scorpion tank. This is an image we've already seen. Gonna skip it. Uh, the Dog and Lumnon have been working on something new. Oni won't let us tell you any more for now, but we've managed to sneak a couple of pictures out. Interesting pictures. So, uh, this is definitely some interesting pictures. It looks like a building interior, a hallway and stuff. Seems pretty apparent. Uh, the one that kind of gets my attention the most is the second picture because it's, like, got some windows and stuff in here. And it almost looks like it could be some sort of, like, lunar colony or something. I don't think that's actually what it is. I think it's just the way the windows are blocking the light from outside. And you can only see the uh, the hills and stuff. But it's definitely an interesting structure. Uh, I'm very excited to have more building interiors to fight in and stuff like that. Um, you know, because I love me my Halo shotgun. Not gonna lie. Uh, moving on from there, Big Wolk has been working on a couple of small PvP maps as well that will be combined into one larger map to allow for PvP game modes to be created. With players voting what zones they wish to play in, the first I can announce is a small tribute to the Blood Gold map from Halo. So this is actually one of the things we'll kind of cover back uh, in the second update for this because I have some more images than what's presented here. But uh, this is excellent. I am so excited for this. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to uh, see a Halo op tray and stuff was because I did want a much more realistic uh, military experience. But one thing I didn't account for is uh, the amount of time and effort it really goes into taking to set up a proper uh, mission for a lot of people in, you know, Arma 3. And then there's the, you know, the factor of, you know, if you get shot in combat bad enough, you know, you're going to be out for half the mission. All sorts of stuff I didn't think of, you know. And while it's still fantastic, it does tend to lead to a gap where a lot of uh, Milsim units or other units basically have like at least, you know, around like a week or half a week of basically having to set up a mission, um, you know, make sure that everybody's in place where they need to be when the mission starts, you know, it's the same things that uh, tends to haunt a lot of Arma stuff is, you know, you've got like an hour downtime just before mission, making sure everybody's uh, knowing what the mission is and that they're going to be in the right spots and all that stuff. Uh, what this will allow is something that my unit has kind of tested out, for, which is, you know, some of these game modes that they talked about having in this past update, that never made it in. So, you know, things like capture the flag, um, you know, maybe uh, free-for-all, deathmatch type of stuff, you know. Uh, things that are kind of in Arma a little bit, but don't tend to get played a whole lot. I think this will be an excellent uh, addition. I think it'll make it much more replayable. And uh, it will tend to retain a few more people as long as these are set up properly. You know, just imagine having... Uh, a thing where you're able to just set that up on a public server where it's, you know, team versus team or whatever, you know, and you can sit there, oh, I want to play uh, Capture the Flag on Blood Goals, or I want to play Capture the Flag on Terminal, or, you know, an Assault game mode and stuff. And, I mean, you still have that realism aspect that Arma brings to it. It's still different than the actual Halo games uh, in a way that's uh, kind of new to Arma and just creates kind of a nice fusion and a nice middle area to meet uh, with the Milsim and the uh, casual crowds of Halo. At least I'm excited for it. Anyways, uh, there's a little bit more talk, some more pictures here of this map. It's uh, Sizing is a lot different than the actual Blood Gulch, as you guys can see in the pictures. The base is a lot smaller in comparison to the map. Um, 
you know, we haven't seen images of the uh, the base and like with a guy standing next to it model wise or anything, but I imagine it's probably safe to assume the base is probably relatively close to the same size uh, that it would be in, you know, the Halo games and stuff and the maps upscaled itself. Uh, anyways, going on, Flurry, aka the Flurinator, has been working with myself on various art projects you can read about here. He has kindly created from scratch a new text font for the mod based on the one used in the Halo 5 HUD. This will be implemented for Optray HUD systems and GUIs. So, pretty cool system. It will be a nice addition, I think. I do like the current HUD and stuff now, but I think, uh, you know, a little bit of improvement wouldn't hurt it some. Uh, beyond that, Flurry has been doing some concept art for the dev team. Recently, I requested a concept design for a pillar to support landing platforms on one of our new maps, that map being New Horizons. Uh, this is a model and game I created out of this concept. No texture, we're going to skip that because we already saw it, in fact, in this update. Morthon Scorpion King. Oh, Morthon, you scoundrel, you. Okay, so Morthon's been doing a lot of awesome stuff for the mod here. Uh, if you guys don't know about Morthon, he does a lot of the Halo 3 stuff that's getting implemented into future uh, updates of First Contact and stuff like that, uh, at least as of right now. So let's get into it, because his stuff's always really cool. Uh, has been working on a storyline for a fully voice-acted mission on Gridlock. This will be a test of possible campaign systems I have in the work. While I can't tell you much at this stage, I can show you a video of an early development of the multiplayer briefing screen, which I'm going to let you guys watch now. Anyways, um, that was a pretty cool video. I really liked all the stuff that's put in there. Uh, obviously, it's not much of a tease of the voice acting or anything else from the campaign, but just if that menu quality is anything to indicate, the campaign will be absolutely fantastic. I've never seen anything like that for a campaign in Arma myself before. Uh, and anyways, they also kind of say that custom planet model you see rotating on the menu may be op or added to Optray as a hologram, that's shown in a video here, which I'm not going to show you guys that particular video because it's a lot of rehashing of already existing stuff. Uh, beyond that, Morthon Scorpion King has also been working on various models for First Contact. Here are a few pictures. A new picture of his brute model, uh, as well as a looking, uh, awesome looking spiker model, which we won't show because we've shown the spiker. Uh, I, we've shown some pictures of the brute's work in progress before, but this really shows the size difference. Uh, between this and the standard marine and it's gonna be just fantastic when he gets this in and configured properly I think um, staying on first contact though we've got some news about that Drake Darren has been very creating or very busy creating many models for Optray first contact he is currently working on another aircraft until his new elites are implemented in game here are a few pictures of his most recent work including a Covenant Corvette needler reworked elites and beam rifle so I've shown off all that stuff except for the Covenant Corvette in the past video. Um, the Covenant Corvette's pretty cool. Uh, you know, Morthon Scorpion King actually happens to be working on a CCS class battle cruiser. So that'll be kind of cool to to get both of those in the game at some point here. And you know, you're you're fighting brutes off and elites, you know, the reworked elites, and you know, in the distance you've got uh the, the Covenant Corvettes surrounding a CCS class, and you know it's getting kind of dusk, you know, dawn, something like that, where the sky almost looks like it's on fire, and you're fighting off hordes of Covenant coming at you. It's going to be so cool. I'm very excited. It's something I've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, but this is about to wrap up here. Uh, in closing, sorry I've not had the time to compile a list of community activity as per normal. This has been a busy few months since we last, or, yeah, well, it doesn't say busy, but it's been a busy few months since we last did an uplink. But we are certainly aware you guys have found some novel uses for the new content included in point one four. In future uplinks, you can expect to see progress reports on new maps, equipment, weapons, and vehicles that have not been included in this uplink, as they are not quite ready for public viewing yet. 
And on that note, I do know there is new vehicles in progress, new vehicles that I have not shown to you guys, vehicles that I haven't even seen myself yet. Um, I've had a couple hints dropped to me by the devs, but um, I've been asked to share what little hint I got to not share that with you guys, unfortunately. Um, suffice it to say, though, it is so little of a hint, I can't really imagine what that uh, vehicle would be. Just because in my head, I can't imagine... Um, with what what hint I got, what uh, is what it could be that's not already in the mod? Uh, if that guy's uh, like helps you guys at all, I don't know. It's very vague, and that's what I got. Very vague. Uh, beyond that, like I said, this is only about half the update. There's a ton of stuff I didn't include in here from the community and things like that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of non-official work by the devs being done, and uh, we gotta kind of touch on that here. So we'll have to uh, wrap this one up. And I will see you guys for the next Operation Trebuchet update video, hopefully soon.